Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well today. So in today's video, I'm actually going to be covering one of the more viewed videos on the channel, um, which was from the original Game Maker series, which was resizing um, game windows. And I'm going to do a little bit of extension discussion on um, some practices around this and some stuff that you should be aware of when designing your game. Um, but before I get into that, big thank you to all you guys. You guys are amazing. You have no idea. Discord server's still open. Feel free to jump on anytime you guys want. It's a bit of a hangout space. So let's get into it. So I'm just going to boot up the game as normal. And you guys are going to see I've got some lovely houses. It takes up my full screen. Now, something that you're going to notice is on my houses, if I load my sprite, see how my sprite's nice and crisp and shitty? When I load it in game, it's actually a bit warped. You can see I've got extra pixels being filled in. That's to do with an aspect ratio. I'm going to get into that later, but I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Okay, so if I go to my view controller, in here I've got a couple of things going on. Oh, uh, let's make that a bit bigger. But nothing too crazy. It's actually pretty much the same code as the original. I was just testing to make sure it would actually work in the new Game Maker. Um, and I got a surprisingly nice little side result, once I can get some extra space here. Let me minimize that. So, in here I've got the same thing as what I had done prior. Um, that can be ignored for now, that's part of something else later. So, the only thing that's changed is in here I had in the original code a view current equals true. Um, doesn't work anymore because it's a read-only value, so you can't actually influence it. But now, I don't even need to go into my view settings, like I had to in the last one to modify it. This one just does its job. Let's go through a bit of the application to see what it's doing. So, the first step here is I just set the view zero to true to activate it. Then I tell it to pull the view H and view um, W ports. And I set them to the same display as my um, computer window. So this display get width and display get height basically pulls my display from side to side. Um, the next set of options I do is I set my window size to that. Then I set my position of my window and then I resize my surface. Now I'm just going to show you what happens if I run this program without doing these steps here. Because what I think we should get from memory is a complete error. Awesome. Ah, I know why though. Because in here, I'm drawing a ratio. Let's just quickly get rid of that. Okay, so now when I draw it, I should get a window. Like so. So you can see there, some of the stuff that didn't happen is it hasn't pulled it into the position I want it. So now, this here actually sets my position of window. So when I load it this time, it actually sets it up into the corner and I've actually got escaped exit. So just as a pro tip, make sure you build in an escape function just in case. Um, because I have been caught in windows before where I can't exit them when I do stuff like this. And the last thing that happens here is a safety check. So in the safety check, what this does is it says uh, viewport is not equal to surface width. The surface I'm looking at is my game surface or the application surface. And I do that again for the H factor. Then what I do is I resize the surface based on that. So that's just a safety to make sure that everything's happening. So when I run it in its full intended um, program, that's what we get. That's what the original video had. Minus I was showing how to access views in here. So I don't even know if you can get to views anymore um, in the room editor because I'm still finding my way around it. Um, I would suspect you can, I just don't know where they are. But normally you can uh, um, update and change views in here as well. So let's get into the second part of this tutorial. The slightly more massy, boringy part of it. So aspect ratios, shoot me now, I hate them. So what an aspect ratio is, is it's just effectively the principal idea of making sure your image stays as clean as possible. 
So what we do, or what I've done in this particular program, I should say, is I've developed a quick set of code that allows you to help retain your aspect ratio. So the way this works is I take my starting viewpoint and H point before I modify it. So I take it here, because remember code always is read from first line to end line. So I take my first two steps and I remember both these. Down here in my global, I've got a um, var aspect ratio X and var aspect ratio Y. Then in the second part to what it's equal to, ignore ABS for now, ignore the negative one. I take my room starting width and starting height and I divide it by now my new current set of those two values, which is my display. I divide my room start by my existing, which returns to me a percentile value based on how big it is. So that's gonna to return to me a percentage, which is 78%, oh sorry, 79%, I think it was. 0.79%. Now, what I need to do next, so this is where the next part of this equation comes into play, is I take one and I take away my result, which gives me my negative, and then from in my negative there, so that means I'm just looking at the other side of that percentage, and then I'm taking ABS, which is just an absolute value, so it just removes any kind of negative value attached to it and just gives me a flat number. So from there, it gives me a straight number that I can use. So now, if I remove this, you'll see in here, well, not debug, just play. You'll see in here, I get two values. I get 29 and 29. So this is 29% and 29% of difference. So once I know my difference, what I can do, so this isn't a global, so you'd put this in the start point of every one of your game, like every one of your rooms to refresh. Um, you'd need to create kind of some sort of step system if you were going to update your um, display dynamically. That's a bit more hard. Uh, but in my house, for example, here now, I've got a little bit of code. So I've got in the draw function, it's just drawing itself. It's not doing anything ultra fancy. In here, though, what I've got to do is a little bit more of a headache. So in here, I've got an image X is equal to image X. This is important. Image X starts at one. Plus bracket image X scale multiplied by our ratio percentage, which is 29%. So what we're saying here, let me just quickly grab the calculator, is we're saying one, multiplied by 0.29 plus one. So we're now getting an image X scale of 1.29% bigger. Same with the Y, so that's staying dynamic. Now this will account for different size ratios and stuff like that. The next thing I have to do is now adjust my X, Y on the object as well to shift it into the correct position in room. So now when I run it, let's see what the houses look like. I know that's a long-winded explanation, but you will now see my houses are the correct size to what they should be. And if we do something really silly here, and I just create a house two without that code, you'll see the difference. I know I'm being a bit pedantic on this one, but it's, it's an important thing to remember because this could change the complete look of your game without you realizing it. And because the look of a game, the feel of a game, the movement of a game is all very important factors, we need to bear, always bear that in mind. So that's house two there. So you'll see there's a substantial difference between the two. So it's important to always maintain your aspect ratio. And you can see it's actually shifted over as well. So that was today's tutorial. Sorry if it's a bit more long-winded, only because it's got a bit more of the technical side. Thank you guys all for watching. You guys are amazing. You have no idea. Feel free to jump onto the Discord. You guys are always welcome. Um, please suggest stuff as well. Sometimes I get stuck on what to do. And I will talk to you guys next time. See you later.